Hey everyone, it's me, Rosanna, your host for I'm Still Here podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Sandra Hernandez. The topic today is the force of division, and it's something that's happening within the body of Christ today. And we want to address it through the Word of God, because the force of division, there are spirits that lie behind that, and two of those are gossip and slander. And we know that this really does hurt the body. It hurts. It causes division. It it causes so many things that, Mm -hmm. you know, we see. And it's, it's sad that it has gotten to where it's at. And it's nothing new. We know that. But just to see the way that uh, a sister can slander another sister or a brother can slander another brother that we're a family in Christ, but yet we speak very loose at times about people right and mm-hmm. so it brings a division mm-hmm. it causes uh it causes friction within our church and at the end of the day you know we're we're really i i feel like we're hurting god's heart because right. we're all his children and the bible says that we're made in the image of christ mm-hmm. and when if i were to talk down about you or talk about you mm-hmm. you know i i fail to see that you are his daughter just as much as i am and so there's many things that take place with gossip and with slander, right? And it's it's mm-hmm. really happening today. And and we see it. We see it everywhere. It happens in the secular, but we could say, well, that's expected, right? They don't know God. Yes, yes. But it, but then we know God. So And we have his word. And we have his word. So question, wh- why do you think first of all, um why do you think that that is something that that takes place within the body of Christ? Well, I think that actually it's human weakness. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like we all know that we live in a fallen world. And because we live in a fallen world and our sin nature, the Bible says that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So there's that constant battle that is going on. Mm-hmm. So then it's like that's why we have to address these things because the word of God is our guideline. It's the bar. It's what causes us to, to sanctify ourselves, to wash ourselves with the word of God and with his presence. Mm. So that's why it has to be continually addressed from generation to generation or else things will get out of hand. It's like training up children. You know, you have to reminders and reminders and you have to rear them and bring them up in the way that they're supposed to be. And that's how the Lord is with us. Yes, he is. He's just growing us up and he's bringing us to that place of maturity so that this way we're able to handle and to carry the glory of God that we need to be carrying to demonstrate the power of God and his mercy, his grace Mm. and his character to a lost and dying world. Wow, I love that. Um, even as you were speaking, I was thinking of the scripture that says that the reading of the word is the renewing of the mind. Amen. And yes. as, and I, you know, I understand we come in as baby Christians, right? And we have to learn and we have to grow and mm-hmm. we will make mistakes. We right. will do things that we shouldn't and it takes time, but I, I don't think it takes God that long. It takes us that long. Like yes. when they say that, you know, it didn't take God 40 years to take the children out of Israel. It's like it took 40 years to get Egypt out of the children of Israel, mm-hmm. you know? And mm-hmm. so there's these bad habits that we come in. There's these things that we come into Christianity mm-hmm. with, right? But it's acknowledging and being able to see that. But I think the what happens is it, w- what you said is so key. You said, you know, the reading of the word of God. And that's the only way. Right. And would you agree that, that that's the yes. only way yes. that we will change the way we speak, how we see people, mm-hmm. how we, you know, discuss people, you know, because mm-hmm. I want to kind of talk a little bit about that as leaders, because in, in mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, as leaders in the church, and this is just in the body of Christ in general, this is n- n- nowhere particular, but in general, we see that. And, and I've talked to so many different people from different ministries. And as you um, know, being mm-hmm. an evangelist, which I didn't mention in the beginning, but Sandra is an evangelist and she has traveled the world ministering the gospel mm-hmm. for well over 30 years. And um, so that, that was a side note. <laughs> but um, as you know, because you've gone to many other ministries and it's everywhere, right? It's yes. everywhere. This is yes. something that the enemy uses and he brings. Mm-hmm. But we there comes a point where... As leaders, we really have to take this ownership mm-hmm. of 
how we lead people's lives. Right. Because I lead someone, I don't have the right mm -hmm. to disclose. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of that, how is mm -hmm. leadership, the stance we take when people confide things in us, because mm -hmm. it causes a betrayal, right? It causes a harm, a hurt. Mm -hmm. But um, for the the person coming in, they, they, you know, they come in converts, but then we want them to become disciples, right? We want them to mm -hmm. become, you know, and what is a disciple? It's a follower of Christ. It's yes. adopting his ways and his views, right? Mm -hmm. It's a student. Mm -hmm. So a student learns, but a student needs a teacher. So we're teaching, we're guiding, we're directing them. But there comes a point where that student has to study to pass that test, you know? And so then there's that, I'm going to take ownership for my walk with God. Correct. And, um, and people will do as they as they see us do because they some come in and they were raised in the church, maybe they fell away and they come they're coming back, mm -hmm. but some are coming in so fresh. So true. And they don't know anything. And we are the Bible they're reading. Mm -hmm. So what we say to them, what we do, how we discuss, how we carry ourselves around mm -hmm. these young converts determines everything for their future. You know, it's very interesting that you bring up that point because, you know, talking about leadership, you know, I was doing some, some research, mm -hmm. you know, and reading, and we all know that the Corinthian church, you know, it was a thriving church, but it was a church that had a lot of problems and particularly with their leadership. Wow. And we find that in 1 Corinthians from chapter 1 to chapter 4. And there was division in the church. Wow. You know, and it is well known that the division in the church of Corinth was over leadership. Some were for Paul, others for Apollos, you know what I mean? Others for Cephas or Peter in some other versions. And some just as Jesus as their authority, and that's it. In other words, they were not balanced. They were actually in competition with one another. Wow. So pride came in first. Then they were consumed with ego. And then before you know it, as you dig into the research of that church, you find that the leadership had disciples and followers, and they had something called house churches. Mm -hmm. And these house churches were all around the city, you know, and of course their Sabbath, you know, was their celebration service. But there was a spirit of competition. Instead of complimenting one another, they were competing with one another. And all that does is open the door. It opens the door to gossip and to slander. And that's all the enemy needs to come into a church and start just causing havoc throughout the body. It's a wildfire. Oh, it, it, it wild was. Fire. It was. As I was researching, it, it was like there was no complimenting. There was literally competition. And there was competition over finances because they were trying to out-preach one another. Some mm. were very eloquent. Um, there was competition over who had more disciples than the other ones, who had more influence. You know, they're, in other words, they had totally taken their eyes off the Lord. And that's what happens. That's human nature. When we take our eyes off God, then ego takes over. Pride takes over. Our old nature begins to rise up and we become competitive instead of complimentary to one another. Wow. They weren't celebrating each other's victories. Wow. See, that's the counterattack. If yeah. we celebrate one another's victories then we will see the unity of the body of Christ. But when we compete with one another, it just opens the door to gossip and to slander. And why do you think that some in leadership, they, they fall into this competing with one another? I believe that, you know, we all come in with different uh, complexes, you know, you know, uh, I remember Nikki Cruz saying years ago, and in our church, we go by this, that we're a Holy Ghost hospital. Mm -hmm. A hospital has people that are sick. That's right. Hospital has people that, 
you know, need medication, need help, need life support. Yes. You know, things like that. You know, a person comes with a bad heart. They need the paddles, you know what I mean, to get their heart going again. You know, just things like that. So then if we transfer that into the spiritual realm and everything, and the way we come in, we come in with our complexes. We come in with our fears. We come in messed up because, I mean, we're treasures out of darkness. Right. We've been through a lot in life. Yeah. And we trusted in ourselves. Some of us, pride became our covering. Mm. Some of us, our own ego became our covering. Our fear became our defense. Wow. And when we come in like that, if we take our eyes off Christ, it's like when Peter walked on water. The Lord said, come, yeah. come. And he walked on water. But when he turned and he began to see all the winds and the storms and everything that was taking place, what does the word of God say? He began to sink. Wow. And the Lord had to go rescue him. And he said, why did you doubt? Yeah. That's us. Well, that's powerful. Um, I, as, you're, as you were saying that, I was just thinking how at that moment when Peter, when he did look around, it was like his sight dominated his faith. Mm -hmm. what he saw naturally and yes. so maybe that's what happens our sight the way we see ourselves it dominates over you know oh, totally what totally. the word of god says is right and what the word of god says is wrong and i think that if uh, and i'm really glad we're doing this this topic because it, i get excited about it for the fact that we have a lot of people in leadership that have wounds and have things that they've never dealt with right. and what happens is they're charismatic or they're gifted and God mm -hmm. does have an anointing over their lives. But unfortunately they haven't dealt with some of those things. And that's what we, when we say, man, they're bleeding all over people and they might not even realize it right. because they have this festering wound that, you know, and then I, I think w what happens is, um, and I've seen this, I've, I've been myself in places where I've seen where, um, someone will get offended, you mm -hmm. know, but it's like, I don't, I'm not, as a body, and you were saying how the leaders, they were um, competing yes, instead of complimenting. Mm -hmm. So as a body, um, if we if we don't make a shift, because the world is dominating right now. The, the world, mm -hmm. uh, all this stuff that's going on, it, it's mm -hmm. dominating. It's like a dominant force. And mm -hmm. we as the body, we have to fight back. But we can't fight back a broken unit. We can't fight back... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're supposed to be this, this army of God's soldiers. And if I can't even trust that I can share something with you, mm -hmm. how can I trust that we'll go to battle together? Right. Will you really have my back? Will you really truly cover me? Mm -hmm. You know? And so, it, because there's this competition, this mm -hmm. constant, and mm -hmm. sad to say, I think it's, it happens with both men and women, but some, with women, it's more evident. Mm -hmm. I think men do it too but in a different way. Yes. But women are boisterous and loud about the competition. And emotional. And emotional. Mm -hmm. Because that's when I think they make a comment or they'll say something. And you do it in front of your young disciples. Mm -hmm. that, And then we are instilling that, that that is correct. That that's the right way to address a situation versus letting God's word, mm -hmm. you know, speak louder than our own thoughts and exactly. our own mind. You know, and, and we don't allow that. You know, the Apostle Paul, when he dealt with this, you know, because division is a sign of worldliness, you know, oh, and the yeah. Bible says to come out from among them mm. and be separated. Yes. We're to come out from the world. We're not supposed to be, to be a friend with the world is to be an enemy with God. So then we have to be given over to the Lord. So when the Apostle Paul heard about this, he began to address it. And when he addressed it, he began to say, who is, who is Apollos and who is mm. Paul? Yeah. You know, are we not mere men? Wow. You know, and, and he began to address the division and he says, are you not acting immature? Wow. You know, he began to just target that because he says, no, you got it all wrong. He says, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of you. He began to rebuke them wow. and come in strong. 
because he had to because it was spreading like wildfire. And it, it was vital at that time because it was a very gifted church. So they were moving in the gifts. And sometimes the person could be intoxicated by their own gift Jeez. and not even recognize that they're actually stabbing their brother or their sister in the side, you know. And Paul had to come and address their area of maturity and bring them to unity. That's why he said in 1 Corinthians that the natural man cannot perceive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned, wow. nor can he know them. He also told them, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you. He goes, I came to you in weakness. I came to you in humility. I came to you trembling. In other words, what he was saying, he goes, I didn't come to prove anything. Wow. I'd rather know nothing about you except Christ and him crucified. He's the center of my life. I came with him in the center of my life. Wow. I have nothing to prove to nobody. Mm -hmm. And he was actually teaching them and discipling them. And the other thing that he said is that he goes on to say that, um, how would I say that, uh, the spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is judge of no man. In other words, what does that mean? That the spiritual man sometimes is a mystery. Mm. That's, you know, and he goes, but we have the mind of Christ. We don't know God's thoughts all the time, but we have the mind of Christ. And because we have that relationship with him, he will communicate all the ingredients that we need. And he addressed it. And he says, when I came to you, you know, he says, I came in the demonstration, not with words of wisdom, you know what I mean? Or showing all these signs and stuff. He says, when I came to you, he says, I came in faith. And he also says that when he came in faith, that he came with the demonstration of God's power. Wow. See, God will demonstrate his power through a vessel that is cleaning up their yard, mm. that is cleaning up their heart, <laughs> that is getting rid of things and dying to self. Yeah. That's when maturity comes up yeah. because God will trust his treasures, n not to his children, but to sons and daughters, which means a maturity. A mature man, a mature woman. Exactly. And that takes work. Yes, it does. That takes work because- And we application. Application, absolutely, because we can hear about it, and but if we don't apply it, then it's like it's like sitting in church. You know, I'm faithful, I'm committed, I'm because I'm there every Friday, every Sunday. But that doesn't make me faithful or committed. Exactly, I just I'm just attending. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going and I'm hearing and I'm listening, like as we mm -hmm. heard in our church last night about, are you listening? You right. know, and that was a powerful message. Sure was, and um. But it's like, are you really listening? And now are you applying it throughout the week? Are you applying it mm -hmm. to your person? Are you applying it when these things, you know, um, surface up before you? And I love I love what you just uh, shared on because it it's so true how if we are immature, that's when we get, you know, uh, are offended or we get our feelings hurt or we mm -hmm. get like, and mm -hmm. that's when I think that opens a door to gossip. Yes, that it opens does. the door to slander. Yes, it does. You know, um, I think when we don't guard ourselves, and I mm -hmm. love that you said that. Paul was like, "I have nothing to prove." Mm -hmm. The spiritual man is he, he's a mystery, mm -hmm. and sometimes that can be um, looked at as a prideful person. And and mm -hmm. but it, it, he was not. He was he was humble, but he was confident of who his God was. Like yes. God will come through. God will see. Me. Mm -hmm. I'm here because of God. You know, and I think if people begin to build their confidence in Christ, even as That's leaders, right if leadership can build their confidence in Christ mm -hmm. and not in people or how many followers they have or how exactly. many friends they have or how many people they can say, well, I raised that one and I raised that one and I did this or that. that we, I, I don't like when, and this is just my own little personal thing. I don't like when people say, well, I knew it. I, I knew that guy, you know. We, I feel like we take the glory from God. Yes. Because yes. we know nothing. God revealed something. It's like, mm -hmm. give the glory to God because that's who it belongs to. Exactly. You know, so it's like God gets all the glory in everything. Mm -hmm. And Paul was so confident that he was like, I'm not coming here to prove anything. I don't need to tell you that I have all these followers and that mm -hmm. I have this. And really, when you think about the life of Paul, he, he had so had, much to brag about. Oh, my gosh. If he wanted to. He could have really, but he was always giving credit. And they were his sons. 
Mm-hmm. They weren't even his peers. They were right. his sons. Right. And he would, he would like mm-hmm. spiritually elevate them. Mm-hmm. He would speak highly of Timothy and of Silas. And, you know, he, he, and he wasn't the perfect leader. He went through his own mm-hmm. problems and trials. But mm-hmm. one thing about Paul is that he really allowed God to change him, deal with him. Mm-hmm. And he always like, he was so humble. He continuously said, you know, like he, he knew exactly who he was. You know, my husband always says something very key in his prayers when he's praying to the Lord. He says, God, put a wall of humility around my heart. Mm. He's dedicated to praying that prayer. Wow. Be- and I believe that that's what Paul had. He built a wall of humility around his heart so that when the exploits of God and the miracles, because you're, we're talking about the divine healing, we're talking about being people being raised from the dead. We're talking about a, a you know, when he was uh, in one of his missionary trips where he got bitten by that, you know, by yeah, that viper and everything, right. and he should have been dead instantly, and he just shook it off, and nothing happened to him, and it was such a witness to people who were not saved. All of these things are great exploits, wow, but it did not affect his heart. He put a guard of humility around his heart. Amazing. But it's possible. No, and and that as you're saying that, I'm thinking like the wall of humility protects your mind. It protects the way you think. It keeps you at a place because that viper biting Mm -hmm. could be sometimes someone gossiping about you, someone talking about you, someone slandering you, someone betraying you. And if Mm -hmm. you have that wall of humility surrounding your heart, you won't, you won't become that viper yourself. No, you have a defense. You have a defense. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, Sandra, would you say that where we're at today, I mean, really the times that we're in, they're so evil, right? Like Mm -hmm. more than ever, as the body of Christ, as a Christian, because mm-hmm. that's, you know, we we proclaim to be, you know, followers of Christ. Would you say more than ever that we need to really buckle down? This is how I feel about the times when mm-hmm. buckling down and and there, there can't be compromise. There can't be like we Mm-mm. have to strictly live by the word of God more than ever because of the times that we're in and the destruction that we are, I think, more than ever a target Mm -hmm. of the enemy. Like Mm -hmm. he's really targeting the church, our values, our principles. I was listening to a message um, this morning Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was a Tim Delena. I think I said his name Mm -hmm. right. Delena Delena. He's, he was talking about when the truth is insanity. And he says Mm. like, I don't care that I'm an insane preacher because I'm going to preach against everything that this world is saying is right. But, in the house of God, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And we know that gossip and slander is wrong. And it's bringing oh, yeah. division. And the sad thing is, I feel like the enemy is just standing outside the window, looking in and just laughing at us mm-hmm. and saying, look at them. I throw a little dog bone their way and they go after it like right. desperate pit bulls and start mm-hmm. talking about each other and tearing each other down. I don't even need to go over there. Mm-hmm. I just throw mm-hmm. something out there and, you know, I just bring a little bit of division. I just cause these two leaders to start to compete and go at it. And, yep. you know, and for many, like, like the way I asked her, what is it? Why do you think that happens? And I feel too that it happens, like you said, insecurities. And mm-hmm. I think that some leaders are very insecure. They're yes. very insecure in who they are. Also too is... I believe that as a church, and I'm talking the universal church in general, that we have to come to a point where we love holiness again, because that is the thing that is lacking. That's the thing that's not cool. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And everything. But we have to come to a place where we love holiness. Mm -hmm. There was a, a portion of scripture in Proverbs 6 from 16 to 19, and it says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. 
We got to get personal with this. We talked about the general part, the competition and everything. But now, talking about holiness, Mm -hmm. how do we be holy? Well, I think first thing we need to look at, what does the Lord hate? Well, it's powerful. And then we need to do the contrary. Mm. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. Okay, we know he hates this. Now I need to do what he loves. (laughs) So then let's address gossip and slander. Mm. Now, gossip and slander, what does it do? It destroys church unity. It causes division. It brings the person's affected anguish and pain. The person that is affected by the gossip and slander, that's what they're feeling. Mm. They're feeling the anguish, the pain, the hurt, the betrayal. That's powerful that you say that because... um, uh, you've been in my life for many years, and I've always looked to you as a mentor. Uh, being a a woman that has uh, ministered the gospel and just your testimony alone, and just you know, I, I've always shared that you're one of my mentors, um, but you're a confidant. And uh, I, when you're saying what it causes anguish, and I've I have, as I'm sure many of you, you know, um, and you, me and yourself, you've mm-hmm. been. Uh, a recipient of gossip and slander mm-hmm. and and it does cause anguish mm-hmm. and it causes a deep hurt it's 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 very painful to be um you know talked about it's very painful when there's it is. gossip and there's slander and you really have to be um and this is where i think it, it gets hard because um maturity oh um, that has to be your big i mean because we're human. Right. We have a flesh that wars against our spirit, as you said earlier. And mm-hmm. your flesh wants to react. Your, mm-hmm. your emotion gets all over the place, you know. And mm-hmm. you're just like, you know, then you're offended and then you're hurt. And you're, you know, I mean, those times where I, and you know, because I would call you and say, help me, pray for me. I need to keep my mind right. My heart needs to stay right. Mm-hmm. Um, because we have an obligation as ministers of the gospel to yes. keep our heart pure regardless of what someone is saying or what someone, you know, does to you. You cannot allow that to enter in. And if you do, it's like it's that you allowed It's that, like a cancer. It's a cancer. And, and and imagine if Paul would have allowed that that bite from that viper to affect him. Right. You know, that's what gossip and slander does. It's like a mm-hmm. bite from a viper. And if you mm-hmm. let it, it will spread that poison so fast inside of you. Mm-hmm. And, and and before you know it, you begin to die to your values, your principles, your mm-hmm. morals, because it, it's hurtful. Right. Let's be real. To be talked about is hurtful. Mm-hmm. It's painful. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's discouraging. It is. You know, it's very discouraging. And I know that someone will say, well, you know, you got to trust the Lord. And, you know, God is still good. God is on. Of course he is. God is always good. And he mm-hmm. remains on the throne, <laughs> you know. Yes, he But does. there is a process that you do go through when right. someone talks about you. Mm-hmm. And I remember... Um, that word slander, slander, slander kept coming to me. And I looked it up and in the Greek, it actually, it means murder. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. wow. You know, it's mm-hmm. like when you talk about, when you slander someone, it's like literally killing this person's testimony, killing this person's um, mm-hmm. identity, trying to, you know, right. smut their name. And that comes from an immature, wounded Mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. that is not well no to gossip and slander to that degree mm-hmm. there's something not okay well it there's a like a it breeds unforgiveness you know what i mean that's like the ultimate like destination of wow. the the gossip and the slander when the person affected is in anguish and in pain you know it's like they don't want to forgive but that's our defense. We have to practice forgiving. Oh, yeah. You know, and we learn wisdom and we learn experience, how to yes. deal with individuals, yes. you know. Experience comes through that. But sometimes we're the recipient of somebody who has not forgiven. I have a little story. When I was young in the Lord, and I rem- I, I've never forgot this because it was such a lesson to me. Excuse me. When I was young in the Lord, I remember... Um, you know, you come, God's touched your life, you're excited, 
you're excited about being used by God and, you know, you know the call of God is on your life, so you want to pursue it, you know, things like that. And I remember that there was a particular leader, you know, and, and, and at an elevated rank. And, uh, you know, and I think I reminded this leader of somebody who hurt her in the past mm -hmm. very much. Yeah. And so she would snap at me, you know, little wow. cheap shots, snap at me. And I would ignore it because, you know, we were raised, you have respect for leaders. So I yeah. would ignore it. Every time I got a cheap shot, I would examine myself, like, what am I doing wrong? And this and like that, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, I was a piece of work when I came anyway, you know? <laughs> well, we it all... wasn't like, <laughs> you know, I was yeah. like, okay, let me examine myself. Okay. I need to change more, you know? And so I would go into praying and fasting and everything. And then I remember this one t particular time. And I remember standing, we were in a doorway at the church, and as I was standing there with the leader and the leader was addressing other people and stuff like that, um, she turned and she actually, and I felt that she was quoting what somebody said to her that hurt her. Wow. The wound. It's like the wound came out, but it was coming out at me. Hmm. And then, you know, I tried my best not to be disrespectful in any way. But I turned and then after I said, I'm not that person who hurt you, mm. you know? And the leader wasn't ready for that. They just kind of got a little startled. But I was like, because I recognized it. Yeah. Like, you're taking out on me something that somebody else did to you because I remind you of them. Yeah. Maybe I have a personality like them. You know, I don't know. But it was like I was a recipient of that. But I had to use wisdom, quick wisdom, Yes. To cover my sister, yeah. to cover my leader, you know? And I was like, I'm not that person who hurt you. That person never did that again. That's really powerful because that takes a lot it to do It was not that. easy to do. I, I, I mean, I think if we had more of that, it would... It, it, like the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. Yes, Because yes. really it was... It was a sinful behavior, really, to mm -hmm. treat you the way she was treating you yeah. because it wasn't godlike. Mm -mm. But you recognize that she was speaking from a place of hurt and mm -hmm. maybe some things, maybe she had been betrayed or, you know, we don't know what took place there. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you turned around and you and she was your leader. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that you had more maturity and you were able to do that. Um, it shifted that whole entire, mm -hmm. I'm sure the whole relationship. It did. Like, it just shifted it because you just said she never did that again. And mm -mm. and I believe that uh, sometimes we just need to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like you said, instead of competing, because you, I'm sure you could have been combative. You could have come back oh, and yeah. you could oh, have acted I had a reason. Way. You had reason. See, and that's, that's so key right there. I'm so glad you said that. But just because you have reason doesn't make it right. It doesn't give you the liberty. I had reason. Mm -hmm. You know I had reason. Yep. But it wouldn't have yep. made it right. No, no. Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, I have to answer to God. And, and I feel like someone needs to hear this. You have to answer to God. If you're a believer today and you're watching this podcast, you need to know that you have to answer to God for your actions, for every word spoken forth out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And we can't justify it by saying, well, they did this to me and they said this mm -hmm. about me because look at everything that Jesus went through. Oh, yeah. Look at everything that he had to endure. Everybody turned from His him. His last words. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like, oh, God, look what they're doing to me. Mm -hmm. Help me. I mean, he did say, why have you forsaken me? But I believe that that was, you know, he was God and man at the same time. That was his humanity mm -hmm. being displayed mm -hmm. before all of us. So we would have a reference point that even Jesus right. felt this way, right. but he wasn't. He wasn't forsaken. He wasn't forgotten. He That was a moment more than ever to believe that God was mm -hmm. with him. But he his, his last words were like, Father, like, forgive them forgive for they them. know not what they do. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Sandra, sometimes... 
it is out of ignorance. And ignorance is not a bad word. It simply means lack of knowledge. Right. They really don't know. And maybe mm -hmm. this person, your this leader, didn't really realize what she was doing to you until you. Mm -hmm. But I love what you said. Quick wisdom. And, and you said something so honorable. You said, I had to cover my leader. Yes. And that's beautiful yes. because our leadership, they're human. We're leaders and we're human. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect, mm -hmm. right? Leader, leadership, they're still human. We, mm -hmm. we can't put people on a pedestal because we will right. be disappointed. Well, you know, there's what led me to that point, and I really believe that how the Holy Spirit spoke through me like that is because when I was getting cheap shots thrown at me, mm. I went into some prayer and fasting about myself. You know, Lord, change me. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really, th I, I'm offended you know what I mean? And I would tell the Lord that, but I was very careful because that's his leader. Yeah. You know, and even, you know, what does the Bible say? Touch not mine anointed to my prophets, do them no harm. No harm. So I knew the rank that she was in. Yeah. So I was very careful because I was taught. Yeah. And so I went into prayer and fasting. And then when, uh, when I did that, I believe it was only because I filled myself with God's spirit. And we go back to the and word he taught maturity. Me to react. Yes, that's it. But it's that maturity. Exactly. You learned how to discern and how to yield yourself over to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that he's what's missing a lot in, in conversation. He's what's missing mm -hmm. when, you know, it, when people are discussing hurts and wounds and pains exactly. and letdowns, it, he's not invited into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if he were to be invited, you know, right. and it, it's like it would shift everything. Now, I was thinking about something right now when you were talking. Um, mm -hmm. You were talking about how, you know, covering covering your leader, which I agree with 100% because I, I'm, I'm a leader and I've let people down. That's And I've been let down, but that's mm -hmm. part of... It's just part of it. You know, it's not nothing. It to, is. You know, it's just part of. We're part all of a it. work in progress. We're, we're, all of us are. None, none of us have arrived. Right. But because um, like you said, we talked about the general. We're touching on the personal. But this is something I, I feel. And this is where I'd like to, you know, tap in a little bit into that gossip mm -hmm. and slander a little bit more uh, in detail. What okay. does scripture say about that? But mm -hmm. um, I, I thought I was thinking about this. At what point. Does a person uh, be held accountable mm. for what they are saying? Mm -hmm. You know, because I understand we sometimes speak out of a wound or out of a hurt. Right, right. Out of ignorance, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I said something I shouldn't have, you know. I would say there's, t uh, to me, I mean, I'm sure there, there might be more, but there's two things you can't take back. Right. What you've already said in time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you mm -hmm. just can't. You know, well, there's a difference between gossip and slander. Like for one thing, gossip is typically involving details that are not confirmed as being true. Mm. Now, slander is a little more malicious. Yes. Slander is the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. So there's a difference yeah. between the two. And I believe that when that exists... And they're being held accountable. You know, the Apostle Paul, he addressed it, you know, and he addressed it in in Romans. And actually, it was uh, in Romans. Let me see. I got it right here. It was in Romans chapter 16, verse 17, which says, Now I urge you, brethren, to note those that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. So there was two things that he said. One thing that you note them, which means that you keep your eye on them. Wow. And not your eye on them in a malicious way, but in a way because, you know, it does spread and people yes. get hurt by it. Yes. And it might hurt a person that has a weak conscience. Ooh. You know, and the Bible says if you sin against a weak man's conscience, you sin against Christ who died for that weak man. So then you have to do a twofold thing as a leader. You have to protect and you have to keep your eye out. Wow. You know, and when you protect and keep your eye out and stuff, you always have that peacemaker's mentality, that uh, forgiving spirit. So he said to note them, mm. keep your eye on them, watch them. 
And then he goes on to say that um, to avoid them. Wow. You know, and which means that you don't treat them like they're nothing and nobody, but you got to be very careful and you have to almost be emotionally intelligent when you deal with them. Oh, I agree with you 100%. You have to have your guard. You have to know who they are, but always look at them like, but they could repent, but they might repent. I don't know if today's the day. I don't know if tomorrow's the day, but I got to do right by them because we're the body of Christ. We're on the same team. Yeah, because at the end, we don't want to lose a soul. Exactly, we don't. But I think that, um, and again, mature leadership. This is where we have to be mature and be Mm -hmm. at a place that that we can address those things. And we should, because Paul said, right? Keep an eye. To Mm -hmm. me, that is... That is addressing mm-hmm. a matter, you know. Right. And if someone, I remember my, my mom um, growing up. My mom was very like one thing she she literally despised was like gossip and slander. She mm-hmm. just and she would always mm-hmm. tell me if they come and talk about someone to you, they're talking about you to someone else, <laughs> right? And that another is so thing true. is to self evaluate. Why do you feel you can come and tell me that? Why are you mm-hmm. so free to come and share that with mm-hmm. me? So that's a self-evaluation. That's where I need to look at myself and be like, hold on. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you feel you can t- tell me that? You know, that's mm-hmm. not okay. But also if someone does come and they're loose at the mouth or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like, I feel that. And you don't even have to be a leader to do this. No, There's no title no. required mm-hmm. to, with love, bring some correction. Right. And just say, right. you know, that's not okay. Well, the word of God says in Proverbs 19, 9, a false witness will not go unpunished. Wow. And he who speaks lies shall perish. Those are some strong words from the word of God. Yeah, that's a deep, that's heavy. Those are things that we have to address. I agree. We have to address the person who has a problem. Yes. You know, we, these are things that, and so when Paul said, keep your eye on them, he was really saying address them. You know what I mean? When he said avoid them, it was avoid being a confidant to them. Avoid being a part of it, you know, avoid exactly. being in agreement with it, but exactly. not per se, just leave them to themselves, right? Because we are uh-huh. to be our brother's keeper, you know, but exactly. I, so there does have to come a point where it is addressed and, mm-hmm. and, and, and carefully so, because some are very delicate. new, some I I have um, been around people that you would think, mm. well, they, they know better. They've been around right. for 20 years, but been gossiping for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Now, I I feel that gossip and slander, is, it's demonic. It's, it really it's is. It's demonic because to gossip is a betrayal. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, um, Proverbs 11, 13, and, and it says in Proverbs 11, 13, that a gossip betrays a confidence. You know, and when I, I, I was looking at that, um, there's three ver- three versions. NIV it says, a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Mm-hmm. It, uh, New Living Translation says, a gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Mm-hmm. And the last version that I really liked was the, um, the English Standard Version. Whoever goes about... Uh, slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. Mm -hmm. And I I feel like this is a picture of the flesh and the spirit. It is immature, mature, you know, um, holiness at versus filth. Yes. You know, because it's filth. When you, when you gossip, it's filth. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, and, it when it it uses the word secret and you could almost think like oh you know secretive but it's not in that manner it's talking about just keeping that mm-hmm. confidence you're so trustworthy that mm-hmm. i can bring something to you not everything is for us to repeat that's right even that's as right. um even as being married there's some mm-hmm. things that women will come and confide in me i don't come home and share those things with my husband mm-hmm. they weren't for his mm-hmm. ears or he would have heard it firsthand right and right. vice versa there's things he comes out of meetings or out of things mm-hmm. and i don't know and i don't ask mm-hmm. because it's none of my business 
you know, just because he's my husband or because I'm his wife, I don't have that right mm-hmm. to know. And sometimes I think we we think we have a right to know. And we'll go around mm-hmm. asking about people or, you know, and, and it says that a gossip goes around telling secrets. Exactly. And then the sad part is that some of those things were entrusted to you mm-hmm. and then some you just picked up from another gossiper. Exactly. I mean, let's keep it as real as we can. Mm-hmm. I know we're, we're to be merciful, we're to be kind, of course, all those things, but we also need to address the spirit behind. Well, because it brings so much destruction. Now, one of the things that, a description that I found about gossip and slander is it has a sadistic personality, is emotionally sadistic, Mm. has a toxic behavior that breeds distrust and bitterness. So then that goes into the body. So then here's where we have to use wisdom. There was a time a few years back, and uh, I remember that somebody brought me some information. Mm. Now, there's a difference between gossip and slander and then between information. This was where the ball was thrown in my court and if I wanted to, I could have slandered or gossip about the information that the sister yeah. brought me. And it was a sister in the church, and they were in leadership, and she had come to me, and she says, can I talk to you? It's very important. So then after I said, sure. And so, you know, we went out to dinner and so forth and so on. And and she was really confessing. She was confessing a lot of what was taking place, that she still took drugs from time to time, things like Mm. that. This was years back. And then also, too, the other one was that she, um, her and her husbands, they were in leadership, but they were not married. The whole church thought they were married, but they were not legally married. So she brought that information to me. And I was like, Holy Spirit, what do I do with this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're in leadership. Yeah. So then I just remember I looked at her square in the eye and I goes, sister, I have to blow the whistle on you with that one. Yeah. I have to tell our leadership because spiritually you are harming the body of Christ exactly. by lying to them. You know, it, it that is information because it'll hurt somebody else that I cannot keep to myself. Correct. But I had to protect her you know, her husband and stuff. And also too, because the ball was in my court. Yes. You know, so then after it's like, I couldn't go, well, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? Right. No, I had to go to my pastors and let them know. And then she told me, she goes, I know. She goes, that's why I told you. She goes, because I'm tired of it. She goes, he won't marry me. She goes, and I get in such depression that I'll go. And she even showed me the, she even took me to the connections she goes, I go here on this day. I go there on that day. I go there on that day. <clears throat> the funny thing about it was all the old connections I had. <laughs> so you knew. <laughs> so I knew the houses. That's fun. So the thing of it is, is I was like, you know, I prayed for her. You know, I kept it to myself. Right. And then after I went and I scheduled a meeting with one of our pastors. And then I told him, I said, I have some information. And I go, and it's not good. So, you know, they called them into the office, sat them down, of course, dealt with him and everything like that, you know. And, you know, thank the Lord. It's like he's still in the church. Oh, wow. She's not. You know what I mean? Because it it just, things didn't change, but he was sat down and stuff like that. And I don't think he wanted to marry her. But it was one of those things where I had to go tell you know what I mean? She she was coming to me, but she already knew because she knew the integrity that I she had. Knew, she knew who you were. And it, it was contrary to the word of God. When it's sin and it hurts the body, then that's not gossip. No. It's that's not. not slander. No. That's protection. That's keeping the ranks together. That's keeping the church holy, being responsible, you know? So I couldn't just let something like that go. No. Because it was hurting a lot of people under them. Yeah. And they were probably struggling and didn't even know why. Because spiritually, 
something was taking place and something was out of whack. That that's heavy because Proverbs eleven thirteen. Uh, I I was looking into that scripture and it gives this description in uh, some of the commentaries that I was reading and it says a faithful man will not disclose what he is trusted with unless. And this is exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. Unless the honor of God and the real good of society require oh, come on. it. Yep. That is yep. powerful. And that goes back to a leader understanding that there mm-hmm. are some things. That it's not our place to keep to ourselves. No. It is not biblical no. to keep some things to ourselves. Mm-mm. We must speak up. We must say something because mm-hmm. we will harm and then I think the enemy can begin to use that. And before mm-hmm. you know it, you're telling this person, you're because it, it was it was given to you because you were meant to give it back to someone else. Mm-hmm. And because mm-hmm. we don't channel it the right way and who we're supposed to, mm-hmm. which is God, and then ask God for that direction and take it to our leadership, we right. start speaking and saying little things. And had you handled that in a different manner, it, it would have ruined her and even yeah, though she's not would've. here anymore, at least she knew that she was loved, mm-hmm. and she was not mm-hmm. talked about. You loved her, and I love the fact that she and was she just, acknowledged that, and she acknowledged. And the thing is that she, you were upfront. You said I, that I can't. I, mm-hmm. I've been in positions like that. I had a, I had um, and a, they're tough positions. Oh, they're, gosh, I, I had a worship leader come and and she shared with me that she was having an affair on her husband, and I was like. Uh, <laughs> Like, okay, you know, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I just, and again, you know, this is years back, but I was just, I can't keep this. No. I cannot. No. And I was very honest with her. She did not handle it well. Mm -hmm. She got very upset that I was going to, you know, speak up on it. And Mm -hmm. I told her, I will do it discreetly. I will, you know, I even said this, I even told her, you should share with, you know, your pastor, talk to him, call your pastor's Mm -hmm. wife. You know, I Mm -hmm. gave her that, that option because I felt like that's, you know, that's a heavy thing. You're, oh, you're going to ruin my family. And then she, you know, was like, you're going to destroy my family. You're going to, I said, no, honey, I'm not. It, this is the sin that was allowed to come right, in right. that's bringing destruction into your home. It's mm-hmm. it's not me. You know, why well, came and I told you? Yes, but this is where you know your place mm-hmm. in the body. And mm-hmm. where I was at, I didn't have the spiritual authority to, you know, deal with what needed to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. You know, I was her leader, but I wasn't her shepherd. I wasn't her pastor, mm-hmm. her pastor's wife. So it's like you you have to disclose some of these things. They're not for mm-hmm. us. That, right. You know, they're not for us. We're mm-hmm. we're gatekeepers. You know, we have mm-hmm. to make sure. And so, um, and it's tough because you, you know, um, oh. See, I, if I would have kept it to myself and, you know, just maybe give her some advice or what have you and everything and that's it, you know, but kept it to myself, knowing that people are being hurt behind this, knowing that, you know, they're living a lie in the body of Christ as leaders. Yes. If I would have kept this to myself, I would have been co-signing her sin. I, that's it right there. And I would have been accountable. That's it right there. Now all of a sudden, because we don't want to say something right then but we're we begin we Mm -hmm. co-sign and we say again that's okay Mm -hmm. and it's not okay no so there is a difference there is a difference where someone's oh they talked about me they did no we protected you yeah we 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 fought for you actually Mm -hmm. because we saw what the enemy was doing and how Mm -hmm. he was bringing destruction you know but but then you have unfortunately you have those that want to take matters into their own hands Mm -hmm. or begin to deal with the situation, begin to deal with people's lives. And at the end, they're not even the ones that answer for them. Mm -hmm. You know, our shepherds Mm -hmm. answer for the penfold. And it's like, so it's understanding your place as well, Mm -hmm. you know, but if you have an open door and if this is common to you to talk about people and to, you know, okay. So gossip is, is, is one realm of, but, like slander that that's like because i think people sometimes slander know, is intentional slander is 
vers- uh, gossip, it's neither one are good, right? It's mm-hmm. horrible to gossip about people. Mm-hmm. But slander, that is malicious. I, I want to destroy you. Mm-hmm. I want to destroy your testimony. Mm-hmm. I want to destroy your spirit. I want to, now that to me, that's where that demonic, what mm-hmm. else influences you? Right. It's not the influence of the Holy Spirit. Mm-mm. It is not the influence of God. No, it's that not. is the influence of the devil himself mm-hmm. to come and put a thought within your right. mind where people sit there and literally devise a plan and listening to this voice mm-hmm. of the enemy because that's who it is. And that's what I believe God wants exposed in the body today because it is demonic. It is evil. It brings division. Mm-hmm. It is not God. It's it's a stench to his nostril. It is not a sweet mm-hmm. aroma. It is not pleasing to him. And we hurt people. Again, mm-hmm. slander means murder. So right. it's like, I mean, think about murders. You, you, when you, you murder someone, that person's never going to come back. Mm-hmm. Th- that you, you killed that person. You, you took something from a family. You took someone from a, from a home. You took someone off this earth. And we don't realize that we do that spiritually. Mm -hmm. We do that spiritually. We, people leave the church because they're, they are slandered. They are talked Mm -hmm. about. And it goes back to that, that competitive, that, you know, I don't like you or you don't, uh, Mm -hmm. you don't, you know, we have very prideful people that feel that they should be served or respected or talked to a certain way. And if Mm -hmm. they're not, you know, Mm -hmm. and then we don't realize that we're hurting people. Yep. And I know that. People might not agree, but this is real. It is. This is real. This is real. And, you know, there's five stages to gossip and slander. Mm. And the first one is the creation of it, you know, is the information that you assume or you think, you know what I mean? Or the information that you believe is fact or that you don't care if it's fact or it's true or it's what. You just want to destroy that person. The difference between gossip and slander. The second one is the initial delivery, is when you begin to just turn it loose. After that, it's the friend share. You share with a friend. After that, it's an acquaintance share. (laughs) And then after that, it's the mass share. And it's like it keeps on going. It's like that illustration that somebody said one time about go up to to a rooftop and you... You slice a feathered pillow open and the wind comes and throws all the feathers all over the place, you know, and like, okay, once that's done, go and try to pick up every feather. You can't. No. It's It's just all over the place. It's already done. And see, some people don't realize that it is very serious. And in fact, I found a scripture that was like eye opening, very eye opening in Psalms 101 verse five, which says, Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. Could you imagine that? Wow. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. Now, why does the Lord say that? Wow. And why does he put it so, you know, you know, because it's bringing destruction and it breeds oh. distrust and it breeds bitterness and it causes division. And even Jesus says that a house divided cannot stand. Oh so it's the devil's devices. So the Lord, he stands against it strong. Not that he wants to destroy the person. No. That person's already destroyed themselves, themselves by releasing that information and letting it circulate all over the body. Sandra, what would you say right now to someone watching and maybe they're, I don't know if brave is the word or bold enough to say, man, I, I did that to someone. I slandered. I, you know, I hurt someone. What would you say to that person right now? You know, I would say... You know, the the word of God says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. And I do believe that there's always room for repentance. The Bible says that all sin that he forgives, except for the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. But when we sin against one another and we sin against the body of Christ, if you're listening to this podcast 
And you have been the person who has either gossiped or slandered. The Lord loves you and there's repentance. Mm. And it's not a coincidence that you're listening to this podcast, but the spirit of God wants to touch you and wants to heal areas in your life. I don't know. Some people are victims. Some people are recipients and they say, well, they did it to me, so I'll do it to somebody else, you know, and and God wants you to take him in regard. God wants you to take him into your heart and for you to know that he loves you still and he forgives you. If he can resurrect even the dead, yeah. if you've already destroyed yourself by being a person like that, God can resurrect you. Okay. He can take he can take that heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh. He could take that proud lookout. He can take that that heart that is contaminated with hurt and with bitterness and with distrust. I'll get them before they get me. God can do so much in your life. Mm. If the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, went to hell for me and you and took the keys of death, hell and the grave, there is no limit to what he can do in your life. And repentance is there for you. And God he loves repentance. I mean, look at King David. He said, he's a man after my own heart. Was he a perfect man? No, he wasn't. Was the the Apostle Paul, was he a perfect man? No, he was a murderer. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, in fact, he persecuted the church, the church that Jesus died for. And then he the Lord calls him. He knocks him off his high horse. I don't know. Maybe today God is knocking you off your high horse. Mm. He's done it to a whole lot of us. Yes, knocked us off our high horse. But he said about David, he's a man after my own heart. Why? Because the man repented. That's right. He repented. Paul, when he got knocked off his high horse... You know, he recognized the authority. He recognized that it was greater than him. And he said, Lord, who are you? Because it overwhelmed him. And maybe the spirit of God is overwhelming you right now. Jesus. Maybe his Holy Spirit is coming into your living room, your car, wherever you're at. And he's just pouring out his spirit and you're feeling that conviction. Don't get angry. When you feel that conviction, yield to it because God is, has a grip on your heart. If you feel like that pressure on your heart, like somebody's sitting on it, it's the Holy Spirit gripping your heart, right. beginning to pour out his love and his change. Our body will react to it. Our mind will react to it. What you need to do today is you need to ask him for forgiveness. Right. Maybe you feel that you have a right to be angry or you have a right to say what you got to say, or this is the way you feel and the heck with everybody else. No, my sister, no, my brother, you're robbing yourself of the goodness and the peace that surpasses all understanding, the joy unspeakable and filled with glory. You are robbing yourself of that gift that the Lord gave us, which is our salvation, which is his peace and which is his understanding. And what I want to do right now is I want to say a very special prayer for you that the Holy Spirit would touch you and that the Holy Spirit would remove that that is in your heart and that he would forgive you because he already does. He already does. Yeah. Come to him. He says, come to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of, mm. that you don't even recognize. You don't even know the love that he wants to pour out on you. So right now I'm just going to extend my hand towards the camera, and I'm going to say a very special prayer for yes. you. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing and your wisdom, Lord, because we know that we're nothing without you. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for my brother, my sister, the listener, Lord God. I pray for those, Father, who are broken, Lord God, and Lord, and they recognize the error of their ways, Father. And I pray right now that the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord Father, would come upon them, Lord God. I pray that as they repent, Lord, as they give you, Lord Father, their, their sins and their offenses, Lord Father, as we all have done at one time, that your spirit and your love would overwhelm them, Lord God.
Lord, even those that are giving over their anger right now, that are giving over their resentment, Father. Lord, I pray that the peace of Jesus God will come me. into the living room, Lord. Lord I pray that the Shana, power of the Holy Spirit would just flood, Lord, yes, Lord, that living room, that car, wherever yes, they're at, Lord God. God, and that you would move by your Holy Spirit oh, in a hallelujah. mighty way, Lord Father, that you would put a wall Jesus. of humility around their heart, Lord, that they would know that they don't need to prove nothing to know that they are significant, that they are somebody, that you called yes. them by their name and that they are precious in your yes, sight, Father. Lord. We pray right now and we agree, Lord, that your oh, Holy Spirit Jesus. is moving on their behalf, God. Yes. We thank you, Father, and we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the majesty in Jesus Christ's name. And also, too, if you're listening and you've been hearing us talk about this God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and you might not know him. That's right. You might not know him. You might say, I, I don't know this, or I don't know him. You know, the Bible says, whosoever will, you know, call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can call on his name right now. You could repent from your sins. God will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. His salvation mm -hmm changes people. That's right. I know, Rosanna knows, and both of us come from drugs and gangs and God knows what else. And God made a change in our lives. That's God right. made the difference because the Lord Jesus Christ is real and he wants to touch you and come into your heart. And I just want you to repeat this prayer after me, whether you're a backslider or whether you're coming and just giving your life to the Lord, maybe for the first time. Mm. Just, I want you to say this prayer after me, but you're going to mean it in your heart. I do, I'm just teaching you how to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to your presence and I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I ask you right now to forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I give you my heart right now in Jesus' name. And for those of you who are backslidden, Father, right now I rededicate my life. And I ask you to forgive me. I've offended you. I've sinned against you and against the body of Christ. I ask that you would forgive me and come into my heart once again. Change me. Change me of my old ways, Father, and let your love dwell in my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And make sure you go to church. Find a Bible-based church and get involved and get in the body of Christ. It's a Holy Ghost hospital. We all need help, but our great physician is there to help us. The Lord bless you. That was powerful. I love it. I love that we're able to... Because it's beyond ourselves. This is what yes. we're, we're doing. You know, the, the, the reason that I am, I chose to do this podcast, I really felt the Lord had called me to, to do this. And he was taking me into a new season of my life. And I just, you know, just piggybacking off of that, just to encourage that, you know, I, I love the compassion and the mercy that you just showed because you know, we've all fallen short of God's glory. Yeah, we have. And we have caused harm, maybe not even knowing it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, because I feel like we did address the individual that may have been the, the victim of it or the recipient of right. it, you know. Right. But I love that we can end with extending God's love to mm -hmm. to the person that caused that mm -hmm. harm or that danger or whatever. I say danger because... It it be, it can it become is. spiritually dangerous, yes. you know, and um, and I love that that we are able to extend that because I really believe this in my heart, and we're gonna get ready to come to a close. But I really believe, Sandra, that if if we don't come to repentance, and like you read Psalms one hundred five, that it was powerful. Mm -hmm. If we don't come to this place of repenting from gossip and slander. I really could see a person like that being turned over to a depraved mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen where an individual, you know, and I share this with you. Sometimes mm -hmm. people's motive in their heart is not 
right. like you know the right motive to come and share something that's true and because the motive's not right the heart's not pure mm -hmm. and sometimes people don't get the results they want out of gossip and slander yes you know and what happens that begins to mm -hmm. eat them up and now you've poisoned yourself right now you are so full of poison you are so because that's what gossip and slander is it's it's poison and we fill ourselves with the spirit of the enemy, not the spirit of God. You know, there's a scripture that hit me when you were sharing this. And this is how serious the Lord takes it. And this is the Apostle Paul, you know, addressing the unrepented heart. Wow. And in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, and this sounds harsh, but it says, Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, God is so much in control that even the Apostle Paul knew, if even if you deliver them, like if you leave them alone because they're unrepented and they do not want to turn, take your hands off of them. Yeah. You know, for the destruction of the flesh. In other words, the Holy Spirit will make sure that he begins to destroy the flesh. My God. Because he's not willing that anybody should perish. My God. It says that his spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. Wow. There is always hope in Jesus. Always, always, always. It, 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 I mean, I I believe strongly. Like, that's why, you know, um, I felt inspired by the Holy Spirit right now as we were sitting here. Amen. You know, for you to just address that person. Mm -hmm. Because God loves them so much. Oh, yes. And God wants them to be set free from that which causes them to gossip or to slander. Because there is something there. And God wants to bring forth that healing. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but I had I had an amazing time today being able to Should share on this topic with you. I, I love you dearly. You're an amazing woman. I love your testimony. I love how you have, you know, um, for years just been steadfast and constant. And you're, you know, the, the title of this podcast is I'm Still Here, yeah. you know, and you're one of the reasons, Sandra, that I'm still here. You're definitely one of those reasons. And women like you, God be the glory. You are, we need more of, of Sandra's in our, in the body of Christ, because you, you love unconditionally. You are a confidant. You are a woman that is trustworthy. And, you know, I just honor you today. I'm, I'm so excited Thank to be you. able to have you um, because, you know, you're, you're one of my heroes in the faith. I was yeah. um, in our church. We have recovery homes and I came into a recovery home and we had a conference, a women's convention in Fresno, California. And you were preaching, you were ministering. And I remember I was wowed. I was like, oh, my God, who is that? And you were just, you know, you were preaching and you know, you were talking about how, you know, you, I don't know how many bullets went flying by you. You were being <laughs> shot at and not one touched you. And you just began to share about how God had spared you and the lifestyle that you came from. And I came from that lifestyle as well, you know, and looking at you up there and just seeing the woman that you were then and 27 years later, you're still that and more. That to me is amazing and i know i know you've had your share of blows and oh, gossip yeah. and slander oh, yeah. and but i've never seen you out of character i've never seen you out of character i've all i've i can only say i've only seen you give god the glory and that's what i aspire like i just want to be a woman that gives god glory Amen. you know and and i know that Amen. you know for those of you listening today, my prayer for this podcast, I'm Still Here, is is that it's reaching out to those that you've been to through some things in life, detrimental, things that maybe others thought, that's it, she's done, she's out of here, or he's done, he's over, he'll never come back from that. Maybe your spouse walked out on you. Maybe a, you lost a child. Maybe your best friend betrayed you. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe, you know, something so detrimental. Maybe right now there's cancer in your body. There's sickness in your home and you feel like 
I won't make it out of this, but I'm here to tell you that you are looking at two women. You're looking at two individuals that have not just survived, but have thrived after death has hit our lives. Destruction has hit our lives. I mean, slander has hit our lives. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, some of the darkest valleys and the darkest moments. But I want to encourage you today and that mark this day on your calendar because you're going to look back maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe two years. And you're going to say, I remember that podcast. I remember I'm still here. And you're going to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and you're going to be able to say, you know what? I'm still here. I know that some counted me out. I know some thought that was it. It's over. But God but God has the final say so. Mm -hmm. And God says this, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. There are plans to prosper you, plans for a hope and a future. They're not plans to harm you. That's the plan that God has for your life. I pray that today you were blessed with this word. My biggest prayer out of all of this today was that the enemy was exposed, mm. that gossip and slander are here to bring division, and that you have power and authority to shut the mouth of that enemy, of that roaring lion that comes to bring division. We're not here to compete with one another, but we are here to complement one another. And remember that if God entrusts you and calls you trustworthy, do not let a hint not even a hint of dishonesty come near you. Be that trustworthy person that wounded men and women can come to and confide in. Be the one that leads them to the cross, right? Be mm -hmm. the one that leads them to repentance as we saw Sister Sandra do here today for those that have been on the other side. Right. But the word of God says that he is with us, that he goes before us. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the, in the world. world. God is greater than gossip. God is greater than slander. And God is greater than division. And there's nothing impossible for him. I even feel right now, as we're talking, I really feel that there's two sisters. I just really feel this in my spirit. There's two sisters that you have stopped talking to each other. You have allowed gossip and slander and division into your home. And God says, I am not pleased with that because you're believers mm. and you will not prosper mm -hmm. or grow or reach the place that God has called you to until you let that pride go. I'm talking to somebody right now in Jesus name. You let that pride go. One of you pick up the phone and call each other and say, I forgive you. Forgive me and let God restore and shut the mouth of the enemy and put gossip and slander in its place. Curse Amen. it back to the pit of hell where it comes from mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Once again, I just want to thank you for tuning in. I pray that you were blessed today. Sandra, thank you once again for coming and being my guest today. It was my privilege. I'm honored to have you, and I pray that we're able to do another show together again. Amen. 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 Right. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And we can't wait to see you again on our next I'm Still Here podcast.